Okay, hi, my name is Justin, and today I have this very important subject. Do we have the power to shape the world with our words? Because I don't know if you've noticed, but manifesting has become something so important and a subject that we see all over the internet. Why is manifesting so popular and where is it coming from? Did you know that abracadabra actually means I create as I, as I speak? And if you take that same word in Hebrew, when you check the etymology of this, of this word, you realize that ab means father, then ben means son, and then you have rak akadash, which means Holy Spirit. Okay, now let's dive in deeper in the subject, okay? The power of words. In Genesis, God created the word using words. Genesis ch uh, chapter 1, God created light. And how he created? He said, let there be light. Then even the waters and the appearance of the soil, he commanded them to separate themselves and then... There, there was. So when you think about it, he never created anything out of uh, something that was out of this world. He simply took what's, what was already there and then command, command the thing to appear or command the thing to be, let there be. Think about manifesting, okay? Keep that in mind during this whole conversation. So the Bible, why do I get to, why do I get to the Bible for defining what is manifesting? Okay, so did you know that the Bible actually inspired um, the creation of the dictionary? I've recently I was recently watching a journalist on on YouTube. His name is Frencho Pearson, and he said something about this topic of dictionary. And when I searched about it, it was saying that the dictionary was made to simplify um, or to be able to teach to children. All of these elements and translation were found in the Bible and made as a dictionary. Okay, so now when you think about words, and you want to think about the dictionary, well, you have now to think about the Bible itself. You get what I mean? And one thing that I want to put in the table now and that I want to shed light on is the fact that all the greatest people that we know today, whether they're painters, artists, whether they're philosophers or politicians like we know today, they're all inspired by the Bible. Even the stories like the Three Little Pigs or the story with um, the Chaperon Rouge, I don't know how to say it in English, all inspired in the Bible. And I saw it myself. I was reading, um, I was reading my Bible and then I was um, reading the story with the wolves where God was warning us about wolves and this reminded me of the story and I was like, wow, it is crazy how the Bible is not being credited as it should be. Okay, so let's get back to the topic. So did you also know that word of mouth is actually one of the most powerful tool in marketing, in business or anything? If you want to have, like, let's say you, you're looking for um, a good bakery, and then you have your aunt telling you, this bakery is excellent. I've been for years and for years and their cake is always on top. And then compared to someone online that you don't know or just an advertising that you're seeing, telling you, oh, come uh, get your cake in this bakery. This bakery will um, never fail you. Or cake is delicious with beautiful colors. Who are you going to rely on? Your aunt or this advertising or this 
um, I'm not going to say this influencer because influencers actually have power, but it is just to show you how word of mouth is one of the best advertising and it is free. And this is why most people um, go on Google to check the rates before going to a place or before buying certain things. It has to do with word of mouth. And let's take Jesus Christ as an example. We, most people know about Jesus. I think this story is one of the most popular story in the entire world. And even a book was made about Jesus Christ. And we all know about him today. And I'm not going to say all oh, because I'm reaching. But what I'm saying is that if you say Jesus to someone, probably he knows the story. Try this. <laughs> Go to five random person, ask them, do you know Jesus? Do you know the story of Jesus? And you'll see their answer. So this, this is just to show you how word of mouth is actually a very powerful tool. And all of this is coming from principles we see in the Bible once again. Now, words are like a very important tools for leadership and relationship. And that's why we put so much emphasis on communication. And just even today, communication is a big part of our lives. Uh, whether you're looking at the news, whether you're on YouTube watching this video, whether you're um, at work communicating with your uh, peers or at school, or whether you're trying to communicate something, whether any, any, like this is just part of our everyday life communication. And Even when you decide to follow someone, it's maybe because they said something that was, um, that drawn you to that person, or maybe it's because they communicated with visual. You just saw something that was like, um, that inspired you. Even when you think of the politicians, why do you think, um, interviews are so important in their career? Why do you think they have to do public appearances? Why do you think they have to answer, uh, they have to answer to journalists? Well, it's because what they say is actually uh, what's going to decide their future. And even if you're, um, if you uh, aspire to be a good business person, well, you have to be bold to communicate because this is what is going to draw people to you and also money, of course. Yeah. The Bible says, even the Bible um, says that in your tongue, in your tongue, You have the power of death or the power of life. And when you get deeper into that verse, you notice that the moment you, you, you tell yourself every day, oh, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to make it. Or, oh, I'm, so, I'm such an ugly person. I'm ugly. I'm ugly. Or, um, I'm not worth it. I'm not worth it. I'm not worth it. Then... Just check the actions that are, that are going to follow. You're going to follow your words. Whether, it's, whether you're conscious or not, you're going to follow your words. That's why um, also this thing of manifesting is such a, I believe, popular, um, a popular concept today is because we've realized how words are directing your 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 actions basically and the moment you try you say you tell yourself i'm gonna make it i'm gonna make it i'm able i have everything i need i i'm gonna do it i'm beautiful i'm kind watch the actions that that are going to follow of course don't lie to yourself <laughs> because there's, there's also this uh, double side where you can um manipulate words which is not really the point of this When you when you you speak life into your life or positive things, then your actions are going to be positive. When you speak negative things in your life, then your actions are going to follow also. So be careful what you speak to yourself, especially and to others. You become, of course, what you speak, and you internalize also what you hear. So it's not only what comes out of your mouth; it's also what you hear. When you hear other words. This also um, will manifest in your actions. That's why um, you must, maybe we, we hear a lot, um, be careful what you're watching, be careful what you're hearing, or maybe where 
picky on who we're listening to and who not to listen to. And you should be. You should be picky about that. Okay? And this brings me to the origin of words reveal purpose. And I don't, I don't think, just like I said with this example of abracadabra, when you go back to what it means, you get the three elements, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, knowing the origins of words is actually um, important because you have to choose your words wisely. Just like the Bible says, the word, your word has, your, your tongue, meaning like the words that you speak, have the power of life or death. And... That means that your words have purpose. Your words have purpose. I repeat, your words have purpose. Don't waste your words and don't misuse them also. So um, what I like just recently, because I, um, I work a lot with words, um, I'm reading my Bible basically. And sometimes when I, I want to get a concept or a definition, I go back to the origin of the word. And just for you, like as a tip, or maybe if you're curious to know more about words, when you go to check the origins of words, uh, four languages you should look out for. So Latin, because this is really an old language. Um, Hebrew, Hebrew, you must know that the um, New Testament was written in Hebrew. So when you read your Bible and um, there's some words you don't know, or even like words in general, just because don't remember that even the dictionary was inspired by the Bible. So um, get the meaning in Hebrew. And then there's Aramaic. Aramaic is a language that Jesus was speaking, um, just like the word abracadabra. And then there's also Greek. And Greek is the, uh, the Old Testament was written in Greek. So the New Testament was written in Hebrew and the Old in Greek. So it's always good to get to go back to the origins of things and to discover the meaning of words. Because words are not volatile. We want to believe that, but that is not the case. Like words are sound with purpose. Words have purpose. When even your name, if you type your name, you'll realize that your name has a meaning. And I'll encourage you to do that. Go type your name. And you realize that even your name has a purpose. Even in the Bible, when you check the origins of the names that are um, of the people in the stories, you realize that they have a meaning and that is attached to their purpose in life. So truth become shadowed with the manipulation of words and their meaning. I know that today we like to like give new definitions of words and convince yourself that we decide what something means for example um woman and man okay I'll, i have to take that example because um this is doing more harm than good okay so let me tell you you know like woman woman means isha in hebrew and what does isha means it means taking out of Taking out of. If you know the story of Genesis, you know that the woman was taking, um, was taking from the man. That's why woman means isha. Man means ish. And now, if we take the name Adam, because it was Adam and Eve, of course, the, the name Adam, which he was a man, okay, the man. So Adam means... Adama in Hebrew, and it stands for earth or soil because he was made out of soil. So it, it's just a little example to show you how words have a purpose. So go back to the origins, go back to the origins of the word. Okay, it's very important. And I'm going to repeat um, the four languages you should look out for. Latin, okay? And Latin, even think about Balenciaga just recently. You realize that Balenciaga has a purpose and it means Baal is king, which is definitely, which, which matches the, the visuals and the communication that they're putting out there, okay? So just food for, thought, food for thoughts. 
So uh, look out for Latin, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Build your life by speaking life. Now you're going to ask me, Jesse, but what is life? What do you mean by that? Okay. And what I mean is that the Bible says the word of God is life. Just like in Genesis, it says, let there be light. Let there be light. And I mean, I can't even explain how deep this word actually is and how deep the book of Genesis actually is. But this is just to um, shed light on the fact that the Bible is actually life. This is a book of life. Like I know people like to uh, downplay the role of the Bible in society, just like I just told you how it inspires a lot of um um, great things that we see today uh, without being credited. And uh, God is not lying in his word. He said, he is the, the word. If you want to speak life into your life, read your Bible and speak the word. You, you'll notice how your life is going to change because words are food. And just like the Bible says also, men won't only live from bread, but also from every word that God speak. This is deep. This is deep. Okay. So just don't believe that you're going to use words, um, um, in a volatile way and think that, um, you're doing yourself a favor. Go back to the, the origins, go back to the Bible, go back to the meaning of words by, by looking at their, um, their <laughs> origins through the different languages, but just like I told you. Finally, my last, uh, my last point, okay, in this subject. So <sighs> God spoke the word in Genesis, let there be light, okay? And realize that let there be light created this whole earth that we know today. But realize that, okay? He spoke and then the word was made flesh. Okay, that's also a verse in the Bible. And the flesh, who is it? Jesus. Jesus was the light of the earth. So he spoke the word and then the word appeared. And this is this whole thing of manifesting. You speak, the thing happens. You speak, the thing happens. But just make sure that what you, what you speak is from life and not from death. Okay? Because we, we're, we're dealing with two energies here. The divine and Holy Spirit. And then we have the devil. So, um manifesting just make sure that you're um inspired by god's word and principles and make sure you read your bible and you'll realize that it is very it is oh my god it it, it sheds light on so many things when you know your bible okay and you never know your bible deep enough there's always like new secrets you discover in the same verse that you read 10 times so the power of words that's it for today. I hope this, this um, topic gave you perspective on why manifesting has become such a huge subject and where it is coming from. Like this video and share because I think this is going to help someone. And that's it. Let me make an announcement. Um, I'm a portrait photographer, so if you know someone who's in business and who wants um, professional photos that tell stories i'm gonna have my email so you can refer them to me and uh yes that's it thank you for watching and i wish you a good day or a good night a good evening whatever the time you're watching